Issue 29. We start off being told about the fact that dragons used to fly around in Mobius. This is the kind of fancy universe where talking hedgehogs run the speed of sound and just shrug it out as normal, so I'll accept this. All the dragons were roboticized by Eggman instead of them defeating him in a fearsome army for some reason. Except for one dragon, Dulcie, who suddenly gets plopped into the Freedom Fighters out of thin air like a bad OC fan fiction, complete with Sonic complimenting her and everyone immediately liking her and Dulcie having a stupid badass pose. Also, she looks goofy as hell. And it's an especially terrible design for a female dragon because you can barely tell she is one. So it's not really taking advantage of that at all. I'm not really sure about the dragons having nose rings like it's nothing either. Pretty cool for a fire breather. This is another pun that's a pure example of forced comedy, where the character in universe wouldn't have said that in this situation. Sonic doesn't think that fire breathers in general are lame. So the only reason he said that is to make a pun because the writer wanted him to. This is a terrible start so far. At least it tries to make it up to us by immediately getting us into the action with Sonic right on top of the dragon while it dodges the laser shooting hovercraft. And again, plane in the neck. Another example of forced comedy. Why would he make a pun when his life is in danger? He's clearly intimidated so he's not in the mood to be trying to be funny. It just waters the tension down. Fortunately, the hovercraft immediately crashes into a cliff anticlimatically. So I guess we weren't supposed to take it too seriously. But how are we supposed to know that from this image? Dulcie says they should leave before another hovercraft would show up. And Sonic decides to check the wreckage of the first one for souvenirs and tells him to keep his distance. Now I'm not really going to care about using proper gender pronouns with Dulcie, especially since she was the hated scrappy character of Sad AM in the first place. So she really does deserve it. It's not like an overly tall dragon person belongs, as, belongs in Sonic as a freedom fighter anyways. It looks so out of place. Sonic finds a gray device making noise, and instead of us finding out what it is right away, we cut to Robotnik's base, where Snively tells Robotnik that the hovercraft crashed with one of those overpowered portable de ro de roboticizer What? Why the hell would Eggman intentionally make a de roboticizer At first I read that as a normal portable roboticizer, and I thought, okay, Makes sense that Mortar could reverse engineer a de-roboticizer from finding this, I guess. But no! Apparently Robotnik made a device that could undo his work on purpose. And it just plopped right into Sonic's lap. What bullshit this is. Also, some of Eggman's head polish was in the hovercraft too. Because Eggman doesn't want to risk Sonic getting his hands on the device that could ruin his plans, he orders Snively to activate the self-destruct mechanism and blow the hovercraft up which Snively hesitates at doing for some weird reason. But Sonic escapes in time and brings the device back to Knothole. There's just enough power left to use it one more time. Okay, so at least they try to balance this overpowered, too good to be true device for the hero somehow. But a one person limit still seems extremely stupid and arbitrary to me. I mean, can't roboticizers roboticize the main people if they want? Why is there a limit for a de-roboticizer? just because it's portable? After being told that she could become a non-cyborg again, Bunny shows off how different she is from the way she is nowadays by, by turning that offer down without a second thought, and comes up with a plan to turn one of her friends into a robot instead. I don't blame Antoine at all for panicking and calling her a spy for Robotnik from hearing that, as weird as it would be to actually think that Bunny would do that at all. I guess he's assuming that she's not really Bunny and she's just a robot duplicate? I don't know. It's a miracle that Sally and Sonic magically knew what she meant right away instead of everyone freaking out. Noble? Why does Sally think her plan is noble? That's a weird adjective to describe it with. Sally decides that she'll let Robotnik turn into a robot and keep her free will with a device of rotors, which she'll then take advantage of to sabotage Eggman before de herself with the device they found. I like how both Antoine and even Sonic realize how overly risky the plan is. But that just makes the fact that Sally, of all people, is willing to take that risk even more glaring. This seems severely out of character for her. The same person who is hesitant to let Sonic run into a trap to save Amy and Tails from Eggman is the same person who is willing to get turned into a robot for a plan like this. And of course, I remember this isn't the first time she tried to get herself thrown into a plot aside to foil Eggman either, but I hated it back then too. 
I'd like to point out that Sally's willing to go through with this plan even before Rotor tells her, for, for presumably the first time, that he made a device to put near her ear that will let her magically keep her free will. She must be finding out about this device for the first time because Rotor wouldn't be bothering to tell her about this if she already knew. So why the hell is she so willing to go through with this plan before she even knew it would work? Sally realizes she has to make her capture believable, so she runs away from Swapbot shooting lasers at her and makes herself trip on a rock. Well, she'd have to run anyways because the lasers would have probably killed her, making her useless as a robot-sized slave, wouldn't it? This is a recording. What? Huh? Swapbots were shown to be perfectly capable of normal speech before, and they will be after. What did Eggman have to gain in removing that ability of theirs in favor of them just having instead in favor of having them just say pre-recorded messages? I would think that giving a robot the ability to ask for clarification on his orders would be vital. I like that Antoine is worried and calls Sally his dear princess, showing that he unfortunately still has feelings for her, and that plot hasn't been dropped as a motivation for Sonic and Antoine's rivalry. Except Sonic doesn't seem to be too annoyed by it right now, so it's pretty pointless. Of course, things go wrong because the device fell out of Sally's ear. Makes sense as it wasn't literally in her ear as an earplug or clipped onto it like an earring, but instead was literally behind her ear. What did he think was gonna happen? You know, Rotor, maybe you should have made a device that would work if she put it in a place where it wouldn't fall away from her really easily. Not to mention it was fully possible that Robotnik would have seen the device on her taking it away out of suspicion, which is exactly what happened. Snidely found it and found out what it was. I have no idea why Eggman took offense to Snively saying he was trusting Innocent as a shark, considering all the times Eggman is portrayed as acting knowingly evil, meaning he couldn't have actually thought of himself as Innocent if he is this kind of psychological impossibility. And of course, Sally looks creepy as hell in this form because of her eyes, to the point where it diminishes the enjoyability of the issue because I hate looking at her. So how are they all going to get out of this one? It's early in the comic, so this has to be solved really quickly. Sonic beats Swapbots for a while as his friends wait outside a secret entrance to Robotnik's base for Sally, but Sally was forced to capture her friends, and Snively says the only reason he hasn't tried to roboticize them yet is because he knows they have one of their the roboticizers, which was left behind with Dulcie. So they're going to try to endure this thing to us by using her as a checkup's gun, with her figuring out they're all in trouble because they haven't gone home yet. Problem is, Dulcie showed up so fast and suddenly and is so powerful as a flying dragon that she still feels like a duke's ex machina lately saving the day, even though her being introduced earlier in the issue makes her a checkup's gun by technicality. I think Sally was able to resist Eggman's order for a little bit, which makes no sense, before being brought back to normal by Dulcie. Where am I? This especially makes no sense then, because she must have had awareness of what was going on if she was able to try to resist and slow down her following her order. But then we find out Sally had no awareness of anything while she was a robot, which I would have loved the revelation of and fully embraced, except this is contradicted later in the comic by Rovians, who say that people who are roboticized are fully aware of everything that they're forced to do for the sake of dark and edginess. So instead, this just comes off as a missed opportunity in retrospect because Sally doesn't get to tell anyone what her experience being a roboticized slave was like from her perspective. Though I'm fine with her not being totally traumatized by it myself. Asbestos boxer shorts? There's so many stupid lines in the story! Wearing those would obviously kill a man. And it's not explained exactly what he is, so why is he able to wear them? Anyways, Dulcie saves everyone from being roboticized by being a fire-breathing dragon. Although she inexplicably disappears from the Freedom Fighters after this rather than being a cheap Duke's Ex Machina and a terrible character for the rest of the comic, thank god. Well, I say this, but nothing about Dulcie's personality is outright annoying to me. She's not nearly as irritating as the pig arguing with Jeffrey all the time, or, or Antoine, a character who also feels annoyingly out of place in the Freedom Fighters by his very nature of being a French stereotype and something Sonic related. And it's even worse because he and Sonic don't always get along. At least Dulcie gets along with everyone, doesn't have any really annoying flaws and mannerisms. But the problem is, she doesn't have a standout personality making her about as bland and unappealing as most of Sally's trainees, making her feel like a waste of space stealing lines and roles from characters like Bunny in the process. Name one personality trait Dulcie's shown so far, aside from my guest caution at the crashed hovercraft. And even if she had a personality, she still feels extremely out of place, looks really stupid and not feminine at all, and if she's so damn powerful, 
And her being missing from the Freedom Fighters after this issue is really glaring and makes them look like idiots. Especially since there's no attempt at an explanation for why she's gone. Is the story non-canon then, or what? And the next story is the conclusion of Tales of the Adventure against the Fiona Duplicate, meaning the story chronologically takes place before issue 29's main story for some reason. Why wasn't this the first one in the issue then? Tails had clogged the roboticizer's filters, whatever that means in this context, with fur from his tails, causing it to build up and explode in Eggman's face. Awesome! Tails had a moment of competence. That was smart of him. It's weird that Eggman says he lives, though, since roboticized people aren't dead. Sadly, Tails is immediately denied his chance to beat up Robotnik by being hit by a club from the Fiona duplicate, who says that you always hurt the ones you love, and she's gonna love him to death. I guess she was programmed to talk like a crazy Yandere just to mess with him? I think it's really cool how after Tails gets grabbed and choked by a mechanical tree, he uproots it by spinning his tail to the side, and awesomely hits Eggman into the water with the tree itself, like he has super strength. Again, he's a uh, kitsune, so it makes sense that he'd be magical. Then the robot catches up with him and tries to drown him until she erupts from the water. Why the hell did she keep on bringing Tails out of the water instead of just holding him in at once? She was talking as if this was how he's supposed to do it, and Eggman wasn't scolding her, so it's not like this was her form of resisting. And how would Tails know if he couldn't take being submerged one more time? We don't know how long she puts him under every single time because it's a comic. And there's absolutely no reason for her to take him out of the water at all. At least not before waiting for a really long time just to make sure. This is the most sloppy, haphazard way to try to drown an enemy of Eggman's ever! And comes out as a Duke's Ex Machina saving Tails by giving him the time to escape. Another thing is, I have a really hard time buying that a robot duplicate who looks exactly like a person on the outside wouldn't be waterproof. That's bullshit! Especially since it's not like water was getting in her mouth or something, she was just standing in it. Eggman's made waterproof things before. So again, the sheer fact that this robot's rusted at all is a Duke's Ex Machina, and it especially comes out of nowhere considering how long it took for it to happen. And the fact that Eggman even told her to go into the water to begin with, since he conveniently forgot she wasn't waterproof. I guess he was pretty close to the submarine, but still. Eggman calls him a two-tailed freak as he leaves, like a bully, which only makes it all more glaring and confusing that apparently this is the only time Tails has ever called that in the history of anything, and nobody else has ever called him a two-tailed freak, rather than this being the regular event for the poor child. For some reason, Tails says that he'll make him repair you, as if he's delusional enough to think that's possible. What, does he plan on brainwashing Eggman? Tails decides to waste time picking up some litter of Eggman's, but quickly forgets all about that when he finds a paper proving that Robotnik's got a satellite operation functioning on the other side of Mobius, causing him to get into the submarine and tell Sally over the radio, but he immediately remembers his original motivation for running away and doesn't. If he tells his friends about this, they'll take over the mission and leave him behind again, and with that, he tries to save the day himself, because he wants to prove to the Freedom Fighters that he's just as capable as they are. And when he leaves in the submarine, we see a tear from the rusted Fiona duplicate who can't move anymore. As if we're supposed to feel sorry for a character who we haven't seen show any personality and was just blindly following Eggman's orders with no semblance of free will. But that tear tries to imply that she really wasn't happy with following those orders. Also, how would a robot do how would a robot have a tear in the first place? The really irritating thing here is that Tails promises her that he'll get Rotor to fix her. Or rather, make Eggman fix her, but Rhoda could fix her too. But nothing ever comes of it. Why the hell not? At least explain that. Maybe Rhoda didn't think he could give her free will and make her trustworthy. Let alone fix her and make her waterproof. Or maybe he didn't want to get in trouble by telling his friends about his adventure having run away from home. Except he plans on telling his friends about his adventure to prove to them that he's just as capable as they are. And he's away from home long enough that his friends must have discovered he was gone in the Tales miniseries. So no point trying to hide the existence of the Fiona Duplicate. Did they return to the island and the Duplicate was gone? They say Ian Flynn fixed all the dangling plot threads left behind by the other writers, but I don't remember this Duplicate ever being found again. This issue was written by Angelo, which I figured out on my own because of the overabundance of forced comedy in the form of characters saying puns for absolutely no in universe reason. With that clumsy attempt at comedy, it was either him or Michael Gallagher. While the concept of Sally planning to bring down Robotnik's face to the robot with free will was intriguing, it was severely undermined by the out-of-place existence of Dulcie, who they should have known everyone hated in Sad AM by now. While she has no real personality flaws or conflict with the main characters, she has no personality, a stupid design that looks out-of-place for a freedom fighter. 
As an overly powerful character, the point of going with Duke's Ex Machina saving the day, even though she was technically a properly built up Chekhov's gun. Aside from that, the plan of Sally's only failed because Reuter was stupid enough to rely on a device that could very easily be discovered by Snively, rather than being earrings or earplugs or something like that. And the biggest problem was that the de-roboticizer, the entire reason the plot started, never should have been invented in the first place. It makes absolutely no sense that Robotnik himself would make one when that would only convenience him. And there's no attempt at an explanation for why it exists. It's sloppy writing, plain and simple. And the second story I'm torn because I love how Tails gets moments of competence where he's allowed to be clever and badass, but he was only saved at the end because he got really, really lucky. And the robot duplicate failing from rusting and not drowning correctly was about as arbitrary as Tails completely forgetting to come back for her and just leaving her behind. If he loved her so much, even after what she was revealed to be and tried to kill him, why did he forget about trying to fix her so easily? And again, he looks very shallow because we were, no, we were given no indication on her personality at all. No indication of what they talked about. So for all we know, he just liked her for her looks. Once again, I like the premise of the story. Tails being fooled by falling for a robot duplicate of a girl and a one-up Eggman afterwards. But it's full of plot holes. And next up is his Tails miniseries. Well, I read the Sally miniseries and I didn't think it was terrible. And so I'm interested to see what exactly they think of this one. 